Hey y'all, we're here at your mom's donuts in Matthews. Get ready to go talk to uh, Courtney Buckley, owner of this here donut establishment, baker of breads and good friend of mine. Let's go. You all right? Yeah, I think. I don't know. Let's see what to, happens, Get right? to tumble around, please. I'm so nervous. This is gonna be like, once we start talking, none of this, it okay. all goes away. I do it as a defense mechanism. <laughs> Good clap. Wait, is that what we're doing here? Yeah. I am out. <laughs> so, Wait, so much of me out of here. Stop. I thought he said donuts. <laughs> Courtney. Mark. Thanks for having us out today. Thanks for coming out. I can't believe it's been six, almost six years. Yes. In October. Yes. This is crazy. I didn't even, like, I was, I, so number one, I've been waiting to do this one because I love your donuts. And I don't eat a lot of sweets. <laughs> um, Me neither, ironically enough. No, not I at all. I am not a sweets eater. That was going to be my, I was like, it was, was going to be my question. Like, how do you do a donut shop and not like, because I had to like stop eating sugar because, mm -hmm. you know. Sure. Middle yeah, age was no. showing up. No, if I owned a butter shop or a cheese shop. I'd be in big trouble. That's, but that's a weakness, there. butter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're just mm -hmm. one of those people. Butter's like, my favorite food. <laughs> <laughs> just a nah. Literally, yes. butter collection yes. at the house. So you've been doing donuts for six years come October. Correct. So we're almost yeah. there. Why donuts? So I had a business before this, and then I started farming. And when stuff sort of hit the fan with that, we uh, had to find a business where I could raise my kids. Mm -hmm. There were donut shops popping up all over the country, and Charlotte had literally none. And so it was like, eh, why not donuts? So is this your mom's recipe? <laughs> it is not. It is my recipe. So I'm the mom. You're the mom. Yeah. I, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that you were a mother. <laughs> um, basically, you bought yourself a job. Yes. Was that it? Yeah. Yeah. Is it always been entrepreneurial for you? Yeah. This I haven't like, had a job for 10 years. Because you, I mean, the thing is, is when you and I first met 10 years Probably ago. Probably 10 years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so backstory, you walked into Halcyon mm -hmm. to sell Other food. farmer stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and it was funny because I'm in the back and they're like, somebody wants to talk to you, some salesperson. I'm like, eh, whatever. They're like, no, you probably want to go talk to her. They're like, they're like, basically she looks like the female version of what you think a female should look like. Um, oh, wow, thanks. Well, Chuck Taylor's and tattoos, you know, was pretty uh -huh, much uh -huh. was, was, a, was a deal sealer. And it's funny because like, even when I met you then and you were just sort of starting this whole thing out, I'm like, what struck me was, is like, she's going to be successful somehow. Thanks. So, did, but the thing is, is, did you ever feel that way? No, no, I always bought myself a job. Yeah. You know, but I'm, I mean, did you feel like, did you know you're going to be successful and that you're going to be? I've always known I've been, I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Successful, that, that's, I still don't feel like that a lot, right? Yeah, well, like, there's like imposter syndrome and feeling like I'm, I'm still trying to get there. Well, but do you, are you using somebody else's definition of success then? Possibly. Possibly, but for me, it's always felt like I know I'll be okay. Yeah, like I'll yeah, know yeah. I'll make it. We have an order for uh, about 3,000 donuts over the course of five pre-orders, I think, or five different events that we're doing for one company, and this is how we make donuts. So 3,000 donuts is enormous for us. No formal training as a baker. No. Cul no culinary arts. No, no, you no. Come up with the majority of the flavors, though. Uh, you know, I did forever. Mm -hmm. I have an employee who's been doing it, and we jump back and forth, and. Because I mean, they work quite well. I mean, were you? I mean, were you looking at cookbooks and doing all this? I have or? cookbooks. I love my flavor bible. Play with that. Yeah, I it's love. The best it's book. like my favorite book ever, honestly. Um, but I love, how, you know, like getting stuff from what we. When I used to go to the farmers market every Saturday, it was fun to walk around and see who had what left over mm -hmm. and just pull from there. Or like Gaston County farmers market's my favorite. <laughs> and Tuesday mornings, I drive all the way out there because there's a bunch of good old boys that mm -hmm. are sitting out there with a bunch of stuff and, and just are, buy up it, large amounts. you are using still a yeah, lot of local ingredients? I am, I am, yeah. As much as we can. All mm -hmm. my eggs come locally for sure, dough-wise, but that's about the extent of it. But flavor-wise, yeah, you know, we really work hard to get stuff done. And why square? Uh, another, I wish I had a 
great story to go with it. But um, that was the first cutters I found. I was literally just like, I ran into I was a store. Be the that's li yeah, I ran into a store and was just like, all right, this will do. And I was it's so hurried. But it's turned out to be a great decision. I mean, you can fit more donuts in a box. We're not cutting any corners, if you will. You mm -hmm. can make shirts, sure let's say, three square meals a day, which makes me happy. I need um, to pick up on that. There mm -hmm. you go. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, like, you you have less scrap dough. Yeah, I have yeah. less waste. I cut biscuits square. Yeah. Um I picked it up from Trish uh, Madry, uh, Carpe Diem and Earls, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Like I always did round biscuits, and then one day she's just in her bing bing bing, and I'm like, oh my god, it's no brilliant. second, no second turn biscuits. Those are always the worst. Literally, we have so little scrap dough now. We use ten pounds of scrap dough in every new batch of dough we make to help the sourdough and the ferment. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, basically, we have no waste in dough. I'm sure this has been asked before, but why sourdough? Why not? As the recipe evolved, mm -hmm. that was sort of, you know, probably first year, not so much. But as everything evolved, we messed around with more things and threw this in and threw it, and then that really helped the structure of the dough. And, mm -hmm. and I love the flavor, like I want it to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, I mean, they're fantastic donuts. They really are. <laughs> not because we're sitting here either. I mean, as you well know, I mean, the end and my wife had showed up pretty much wherever you were just to come <laughs> get donuts. Everything here I do have. This is the oatmeal cookie or oatmeal cream pie. It's got cream pie filling with homemade oatmeal cookies on top. Um, amazing. Okay, I'll have that one. Okay, for here? Yes. You got it. Your mom's donuts started basically in your house, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you have how many locations now? Two. We're here in Park Road. And how many, how many, but you're producing a bunch of donuts because you yeah. sell farmer's markets. Yep, yep, yep. And so we do Davidson Farmer's Market. We almost always have a brewery event, especially on Saturdays. Um, we're doing evening hours over at Park Road now, which has expanded what we're doing. There's, yeah, we're doing a lot of, I mean, I remember when we opened and 40 dozen donuts was like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. That was a Saturday. It was sheer chaos. Like, how do we get that many donuts out? Now we do 110, 120 dozen donuts on a Saturday morning. And you started off just doing delivery, right? Like yep. people would mm -hmm. call and order. Yep. Like, how I did had, that work? I had all the orders in by the day before. Mm -hmm. I'd have to have them by six or seven. I would get this, like literally a piece of paper and map out my route. Mm -hmm. So I would go and like GPS everybody's address and figure out like my best way to do it and, and have it all on a piece of paper listed out. And I'd go and make the donuts get the donuts and I'd have my baby on my hip and I'd go drive the donuts and deliver them to wherever I was going. And when, when you first started that, you were you just had the one? I had a six month old, yeah. At that point. Yeah, she was about six months old when that all started. And how long did the pop-up roll before you signed the lease here? July 2014, we opened here. So May 2014, I. So you went into entrepreneurship, yes. had a baby. And then and had two this, more. <laughs> and did all this and basically while working through a uh, detanglement of relationship. Correct. Correct. So yes, I was married and had a partner when I started all of this and that dissolved all of all of it. And so I found out I was pregnant with twins about two weeks after I signed a lease here. Mm -hmm. um, and they were born in December of 2014. And then by January 2016, so a little over, they were or they were just about two. January 2017, I'm sorry. Um, this was just me. So, you know, you're doing all this and, you know, one of the things that <clears throat> I wanted to talk about every time I see press, Courtney Buckley, it's always, you know, mom and entrepreneur. Oh, and she also has this little donut you know, shop over here. Yeah. Does this stuff. <laughs> and it's, you know, I mean, there's the one side of it that is, um, you know, obviously it's a lot of work. There's no question mm -hmm. about that. But it's weird how it's sort of like, this is like, you've achieved, you self-actualized by being a mother. Right, right, right. And then the business thing is it's just... like, you that's know, cute. I feel like it's a cute little thing I do on the side. Right. Sometimes when it's presented or worded, it's in a way that I, like, for me personally, when I'm looking at it, like, I don't feel that it does disservice. But a lot of the times, I feel like it's just sort of ancillary that you, like, that's not really important, you silly girl. You, you've got a business. Oh, 100%. Is it, it's like, it's a cute little it? hobby. No, it's like a cute little hobby mm -hmm. I have. I think as women, we are supposed to identify as mother, like you lay yourself down. Mm -hmm. You are not supposed to be, you're any part of you. I mean, like I stopped riding horses. I stopped doing any, like when I had my children, that was it. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, this, this has to be my thing because that's how society teaches us. And still the press that I get, that's still mm -hmm. how society pushes it. And maybe not on purpose, but, but there's so much more. We're not supposed to be multifaceted people, right? We're supposed to be like just blank canvases to reproduce and, and have children and, the and, thing then, is, and keep like, going. Do you think that if you were like, if you were to present yourself as hyper-focused on this and like people are gonna I'd be go, a bad mom. Yeah, right? Oh, a hundred percent. Right, but nobody questions your fatherhood. No, never. Right? I mean, <laughs> I've, been, I've been in the press 
a lot. Sure, sure. You know, definitely more than a dozen times. Definitely sure. more than two dozen times. And there was only one time in the inter ever did anybody ask me about being a father, and that's totally. because it was specifically a Father's Day article. Like for Father's Day, one, for a holiday, not even just like. I mean, I was a horrible father for a period of time. <laughs> I mean, I was so wrapped up in being a chef and like going out, and, you know, like celebrating my chefiness, and sure. nobody ever called me a bad father. No, but could you imagine if somebody like caught me <laughs> like doing if that? You, but stuff? if you're Courtney Buckley, entrepreneur, right, and mom, right. Right. Why, do right. Why do I have to pick? Why do I have to pick? I mean, like somebody literally asked me if I identified as an entrepreneur first or as a mother first. Why not both? And like entrepreneur shot out of my mouth so fast, right? It was like I'm an entrepreneur. Like being a mother is part of my life, but mm. that's not who I am, right? That's like by default I have children, so mm. I am a mother. But entrepreneur, that's who I am, right? Like mm. I build a business. That's what I want to do. I've been an entrepreneur. I'm 33 years old and I've spent the last 10 years working for myself, you know, mm -hmm. and doing things. So yeah, absolutely, that's, <laughs> that's the choice. You no, you don't want that kind. It's, it's parsnip. You're very candid as far as like sharing with people in a way that is, it's very honest, it's very raw. Do you feel that is you personified or is that yes. something you had to work for? No, 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 that's just me. I've always been an open book. You know, I will happily sit down and talk about literally anything. I love other people's messes too. Mm -hmm. And nobody has permission to be messy if you're not messy, right? right? And we're all messy. So if we can just sort of like, I, I feel like it's like a compressed container. And if we just let the lid off, then all of a sudden you feel so much better. And so that's a really nice outlet for me to be able to write and get it out. And, and that's sort of a release, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, I, I'm not Holding it all in, holding it all in is the worst. That's like just disease manifested in the body. Right. So, <laughs> do you have a do you have a background in writing? Or? No, 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 no. So you have a, like you have really good instincts for it. Thank and you. I saw that you because you sort of started your blog back up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying. Because you have so much time. Yeah, in my spare time, I like to write. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's a it's a good release for me. You know, I have a lot of women and moms come in and feel. Like I'm a really relatable person, mm -hmm. you know, and I like to be able to share that. I, I don't want anybody to ever think I have my shit together. I really don't. Like, cause I don't. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, there are days I hide in the shower and cry, you know. Was like, there ever a time that you thought you did have it No, no, I've always been like, I'm a mess. <laughs> you're, so much, you're so much smarter than me. There's a no, time I was I've like, never, I got it all together. You never no, do. oh my God, I've never, ever, ever thought I had it all together. I've always thought I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. I'll get through it and I'll be fine, but have my shit together? Literally, no. I feel like I still have like nothing. So I'm, I don't like when people feel like I'm either an unapproachable person or that I have, you know, like this life that's mm. like, it's like, no man, it's fucking hard. <laughs> Kim, do you need the yeast thing again? No. You're done measuring yeast? Yeah. Okay, that's, it just needs to sit. Hang out for a minute. Do you think that if it wasn't donuts, would it have been something else? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I like to say I'm unemployable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at it. I, I actually hate being an employer. Like having employees is the hardest part of Why all so? of this for me. Um, I'm ter I hate telling people what to do. I don't like, I'm, I don't want to be told what to do literally ever, but I also hate telling, like I like the very, um, anarchists just sort of live and let live. Like, mm -hmm. why can't we all just do what we're supposed to do and get along? So boundaries are really, really hard for me and giving direction and make you know, I'm not a very structured person. So all of that has been the biggest challenge of this having a business. Seems the antithesis of the description of a mother. Oh my God, I am not a structured and organized mother. No, at all. Well, I mean, we but, just, you're, but are, just, you, are you saying that because you're comparing it to what you see or are you saying that because you feel that, I mean, I am very go with the flow. I mm -hmm. always have been. So like, I mean, that's why my kids got dragged everywhere. Yep, your but kids it's seem amazing. well behaved. They're awesome. They're super awesome. Um, but their life, they're very adaptable. It's, I actually think it's been a really good, uh, a good thing in all of it. But you know, we didn't have nap times. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like, wherever we are, if you're tired, go the fuck to sleep, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's up Halloween stuff at gymnastics. There's Halloween stuff at gymnastics? No way. It's because it's October. October? You want a donut, bud? You can have a donut. When you put in your blog out and doing social media posts and being very vulnerable about your experiences as, as a business owner, as a mom, as a single mom, 
as a multi-business owner, all these facets that come in that make up Courtney, do you find, like I did, I, I, I found a, a different community of people. Yes, I still, yes, there's, I mean, there are women that I talk, I, I have a friend that we've been having dinner once a, once a week for four years, mm -hmm. you know, our kids are the same age, and having her to talk to, and, you know, I've got a friend I talk to probably four times on the phone every day, you know, like a, a, another mother, that, mm -hmm. you know, a working mother, an entrepreneurial working mother, and so, um, yes, that is super helpful. Um, I often still find I keep such a full plate that there are very few people that really understand the extent of that is probably the biggest struggle. It's the isolation, mm -hmm. right? Like the feeling of, and maybe that's it. Maybe the yelling and the, the vocalization is trying to find somebody who really gets it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the trying to keep the business afloat and the financial stress behind all of it. When you have your own business, it's never comfortable, literally right. ever. Um, and then going home at the end of the day and having three screaming kids and nobody there, you know, like nobody there to help. That's, right. Yeah, because I mean, when you get there, when you when you show up, your op hair is done. Right, right, the right. Work day right. Is done, and right? all of the girls who have lived with me are amazing. Mm -hmm. Like they have, you know, like we have dinner together, and they help clean up the kitchen while I put the kids to bed, and you know, but I'm responsible for all of it. They're, They're my fucking kids, yeah. right? So you know, a lot of times I get home and it's like, okay, but you know, and they can either go do something or you know, take a nap in their room, like whatever, you mm -hmm. know. But and then I'm either sticking my kids in front of TV, which I don't want to do, and, or dragging them to the barn to clean and take care of the animals, because when I get home, then there's a whole nother set of things. So finding somebody that, that really, it, that's tough. That's yeah. tough. I, I feel like that's not just a single mom's experience, because it's like moms never shut off, right? Nope. I think the difference and the part where I feel the crunch more than is like, I don't have even help. I don't have a husband with a job. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you don't even have like, that part coming in. Right, right, right. So a lot of times I do have married friends who will, you know, it's really hard because they never show I'm like, okay, but like somebody else helps, you know? Like, like there's, there's something. In, they're, they're kicking, there's they're something. kicking in some cash. Right, right, right. There's something. So. Uh, I mean, you know, we're, I mean, guys, we're pretty stupid. We wait till it's like the, uh, you're absolutely at the final or, inch of the and thread. Then and, like, like, and then it's oh, like, what's wrong? What's wrong? All you have to do like, is ask wrong. for we help. In, right. Oh, totally. Like, look, look what I did. <laughs> It's like, good for you. you, you washed your own clothes. You fucking nailed it, man. You see them? Thank goodness. Boom. Hey, after lunch. Have you found a way for yourself? No, this is the first year I've taken real vacations. I went away twice this year already. Um, and I, I shut my phone off. That was the first time since I've had children and had a business that I left. I left my phone in a hotel room and went on a boat all day, you know? But it, by the time we were coming home was about the time I felt relaxed mm -hmm. and okay with it all. On a daily basis, no, no, and it's constant. It's co like even, you know, my kids go to their dad's house, mm -hmm. but even then it's the constant checking in and the business. I'm constantly getting messages about, you know, we're out of X or such and such happened. Or, There's no turn off ever. Yeah, I, I think so, but I want to let it cool just a little bit and make sure that it's going to set up. I don't want to break the, yeah. the gel. Do you get a chance? Do you spend a lot of time with other with other women business owners, no. other entrepreneurs? Not really. Not at all. Not really. No. You know, it's it's. I mean, like, there aren't a ton, especially in culinary. You know, right. like there aren't a lot of us. <laughs> this is. It's like you're reading my mind because this is what I want to talk about. It was another thing that I was thinking about. So realistically, within Charlotte, we've got Bonnie and Trish. Yep. Alyssa. Ashley. Um, Ashley. Mm -hmm. You. Yeah. Think about how many restaurants open and close no, in Charlotte. Literally, right? If I need advice, if I want to know what my next step is, I got to call like a 50 or 60 year old man. You know, there aren't a lot of women that I can, and there are a couple, right? Like, but there aren't a lot of women. And it's a very different experience yes. for me than it is for a man. It's yeah, just, yeah. it's extremely I mean, different. I mean, I can empathize with you, but I'm not going to be able to like commiserate. Totally. And so, yeah, it's like impossible. It really is. It's, it's tough. Yeah. I mean, I hate to, <laughs> it's just like, so anyway, lay that yeah. one out there. It's like, how do you kill a conversation? Right, right. No, but really, like, hey, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> but I feel like that all the time. Maybe that's another reason I like to be loud, because maybe there's somebody else out there, right, like that gets it and, mm -hmm. and understands. And but it. I've really noticed that everybody has their own way of kind of like yelling out into the void, you know. And I hate to sound like an existentialist; it's not really the point. But there's that moment where you got to sort of realize that this is your space and you occupy it. And you, you can't really be certain about everybody else's experience or what's going sure. on, but we're constantly like, like, 
throwing well, things out there. We're here for human like, connection. Yeah. We are literally here for connection. That's right. Like mm -hmm. that's it. Without cream cheese frosting, you yeah. got it. Just one yes, for here to go. For here. So on top of mother, mm -hmm. right? Then entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but it's also as a like donut. Then Courtney. Yeah. Oh yeah. Most people like. I'm like the donut lady. But is it frustrating because it yeah. seems like you're constantly you like like it. somebody's because of your gender or you yeah, know what probably. I mean? Because it's, like, right. it's like, you know, you're a mom and it's like not an entrepreneur. It's like, I'm Courtney. And they're like, you donut lady. You're like, no, I'm Courtney. I'm Court. Hi. <laughs> right, right. No, yeah, for sure. It's funny. Even the feed store where I get my horse feed, they know me as the donut lady. It's, <laughs> you know, it's funny because for me, me mm -hmm. as a man, like I would be like, okay, I'm, you know, it's like, that's my identity. I built this business, my right, empire, sure, right? Sure. But because I'm already kind of seen. Right, 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 right. yeah. And you're I could not be anybody, like, but I'm just right. Well, this is a cute little donut business that I have. Right. I mean, is that? I mean, does that? We've been. This is the thing we've been talking about. Is that part of it too? It's like you're not really seen. Yeah, that's a hundred percent it. A hundred percent it is like my identity is wrapped up in everything else. I, as a human, maybe that's why. I, another reason that I'm loud about all the other things that are going on because it's like a way to be seen. Mm -hmm. It is a way to be me. Like, hi, I am a person with feelings, and, and right. If I just like hold that all in and like everything is just so, then I do fall back on just being like what they project me as, as opposed to being able to be me. Oatmeal cream pie here. So we have dark chocolate with sprinkles, dark chocolate, cinnamon sugar, cream cheese frosting, apple fritter. This is a parsnip brown butter sage donut. Pumpkin glaze with a rosemary shortbread cookie and an extra virgin olive oil drizzle. And this is the oatmeal cream Courtney, pie. Courtney. Mark. Thanks for having us out today. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. It's been an absolute pleasure to sit down and get caught up. I've been looking forward to this one. Yeah, me too. You know, when you're dealing with social media, when you're talking about... Sorry, don't, don't say, let's go back to, remember how Jeff... Yeah. When, when you're putting things out on social media... Sorry, you stumbled on that, please? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is when all of a sudden he's like, oh, now I get to be a director. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, there's gonna be so much good, like, slow motion of me making really dumb faces. I'm already feeling good about it. If I screw it up, you have to do another take, but if you screw it up, it's on you. Let's see. What? I'm not doing it again. <laughs>